Tonight is February the 10th, 2021, and I want to uh, I want to show you how I finally, after months of searching and and doing what I could, I got my uh, HP 8596E to calibrate again. I think the battery uh, died in it at one time. It's actually working quite well right now. But <clears throat> when it did quit working, it came up with an error about um, that it, it had lost some of its uh, some of its uh, settings. So I said, okay, this should be easy. And I looked uh, in their manual briefly, which is only almost 500 pages long. It's quite, it's quite a quite uh, it involved getting into these things. I've had it apart too, and I, I do not cherry is taking this thing apart anyway last night I actually ran on something ran upon something and it worked and I'm so pleased I love this instrument what a what a magnificent instrument this thing is now there's some videos out there about it but nobody shows you how to do it well you have to put a jumper on here you jumper I uh, hope you can see everything you jumper the uh, the cowl out to the input that says it wants a nine inch piece of coax that's about nine inches I think it's a little bit longer excuse me for moving it around but I gotta I gotta get it gotta get everything perfect here I want it very much in focused so what you do and I hope I don't mess it up you press reset and it comes up, and of course it's coming up working now. But we're going to go through the uh, the procedure, and that these are your some of your calibration stuff. So you're supposed to start out by pressing minus thirty seven hertz. No, oh, excuse me, frequency negative thirty seven hertz. I'm going to do that again. Negative 37 hertz. I don't, I'm not sure you're seeing all this. And you got to see all of it. Because the tiniest of detail can make a lot of difference. I'll reset it again. I don't want to drag, drag this thing out, but I want you to see what actually works. It says you're supposed to do... Well, if you read the manuals, it'll tell you you're supposed to do a whole lot of things. But I think I finally found out what works first is you do uh, the reset, which I just did, a negative 37 hertz. Now, I'm sure, I don't know what negative 37 hertz is. Maybe that's just a key to let you in. And then you do cal, okay? See, it says cal frequency plus amplitude. That's what I tried. I must have tried it 50 or 60 or 100 times. I don't know. You know, I never give up. Sometimes I never get anywhere. But anyway, it says cal the frequency first. So you see what I did. I did the, the reset, the minus 37 hertz, and then I hit the cal, and it popped up with this screen, and I'm going to do a cal, fre uh, cal frequency. That's all. Okay? That's a little long, and it goes through a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of zizzing and banging around here. But this actually works. I really don't need to show you all of this because there, there are a bunch of videos on uh, YouTube where you, you get to see all this happening, but nobody's talking. They're either not talking or they're just playing music, and I don't get it. <clears throat> so, uh, anybody watches my videos know I know how to, I know how to talk a lot. <laughs> now, I don't want to drive you crazy with it, but um, this is not an uncommon problem. When that battery uh, goes bad and I probably need to replace it it says it's on the a16 board and I've done I've looked through that uh, manual page by page all 400 and something pages and the a16 boards on the bottom if I understand it right okay it's okay now it's going to say Cal FM coil what all that stuff means I don't honestly know all of that but it's doing it takes it four or five minutes get through this but now I can't interrupt it and then after we do this we do Cal amplitude and then when it gets through it says store the results now 
when I when I tried doing this so many times before with this jumper on, I was doing the same thing except I was just doing the the combination cal um, frequency and amplitude, and I was not putting in that minus 37 hertz. Like I say, that that may just be a key to unlock it so that you can cal it. But they don't make that very clear. I, uh, you know, I love HP stuff. This is some magnificent equipment. But, uh, wow, those manuals are just a nightmare, if you ask me. Okay, we're through with that. Now we can do, I guess we have to, I don't know if we have to press Cal Amplitude or Cal again, but I'm going to press Cal. No, I guess it just brings up that man. Then I'm going to Cal Amplitude. Okay. I don't have to put in a minus 37 hertz again. This thing would cal a frequency, but it always came up with an error about uh, uh, the bandwidth amplitude cal off or something. I wish I could remember the exact uh, problem. But it's a very common problem, and, it, it, and if you see that error code on, on your instrument and you look it up, you'll see a lot of people had this. So you can ask Cal Amplitude, you can see right there. And uh, when we get through, I'll show you very quickly. It's just dead on. It's spot on. It's just, this thing really impresses me. I feel very, very fortunate to have such an instrument like this. And I don't know what these things cost when they were new, but they were a staggering price. I'm sure that the government paid for it, and then, I don't know, they have to get rid of it. I worked for the government as a contractor for 40 years, so I know... Now at the end of the year, they have to spend all their money and ask for more, and that's what keeps our economy going, you know, and surpluses this stuff so that we can own it. I'm just talking a little bit so that uh, um, we're not just mindlessly looking at this thing going through its uh, zizzing. But again, I'm so pleased I got this thing working. I've uh, I wanted to use it to make sure of uh, looking at my sidebands uh, for my. Uh, AM transmitter, which is right here on my left. I'm not going to show you that right now. I've already made enough videos of that. But it was at uh, minus 37 hertz that actually unlocked the darn thing, but I don't know why that was so difficult to find. I don't know why that is so hidden. And otherwise, it, it, it's doing exactly what it's doing right here, and it's actually quite simple. Okay, are we there? Nope. Not quite. Still jumping around. It says more one of three. I guess it's still got a, another couple of screens. And then in the end here, I, I test it with um, this uh, this instrument down here, this other HP uh, signal generator. And when I put it on zero dBm or ten dBm or whatever, minus thirty dBm, it's perfect. And I'm doing it at 25 megahertz because I got about, oh, I don't know, about a 25 or 30 foot roll of coax. And at 100 megahertz even, you will you can actually see the uh, the loss in the coax. If you uh, ran it up and measured it at a gigahertz, you'd, well, actually this uh, HP won't go up but to about 500 megahertz, I think. It's one I use down here for, you know, when I need uh, frequencies for my HF rig. The uh, signal generator beneath it is a uh, 8656B. Nice little signal generator. Seems like, seems like it's taking a long time, huh? It's Cal EMI bandwidth. We're almost there. And it'll come up and say, uh, do you want to save it? And you say yes. And then you're done. And it works. And... Okay. Are we there yet? Some cal procedure, huh? I'm sure glad I don't have to try to do this manually. And then it's got some other Y, th that uh, YIG uh, oscillator that goes up into the gigahertz range. I think you cal it right here with this 100 megahertz uh, comb out. You've got to have a SMA to go over there, but... I haven't done that because I don't, I just don't see any reason to do it. Just right here, put it back in the, 
in perfect working order for me. Had both of my COVID shots now, so I finally got all that over with. Made me feel bad for about uh, about a day after each one, and then uh, got okay. I don't remember it being this long, but I guess so. I think if you try running it the wrong way without putting in that minus 37 and then doing the what I was pointing out a while ago, the, the, the two in a row. Maybe the two in a row will work now. I don't know. When it says Cal uh, frequency and amplitude. But they sure don't make it obvious of uh, what it takes. So uh, persistence finally pays off. Holy mackerel. I didn't realize that this part took so long. I think, I think it's a calibrating the attenuator when it's doing all of that. Narrow uh, resolution bandwidth log amplitude. At 299.999999 megahertz. Wow. Yeah, see, it's calibrating in different, uh, in different amplitudes, it looks like. These are actually not the best spectrum analyzers to use at HF. They're much, much better at uh, VHF and UHF up in the microwave region. Actually, what has worked out quite well for me is my... Um, that SD, SD Play, is that what you call that thing? It's called, um, yeah, SDR Play. Uh, you know, it's a little SDR radio. It actually makes quite a nice uh, spectrum analyzer. So if you got one of those, it only costs a hundred bucks and just a little piece of plastic. And it uh, works on your PC, but there's something about these old instruments that really charm me. Good grief. All right, there it is. It's finally finished. And all you got to do right here it says Cal Store. See that? I hope you can read that. Press that. And it says Cal Stored. It's through. It works. And then if I press reset, it'll come back with just that... Uh, that display of the output of the calibrator. There it is. And just to uh, do a very quick check, I've got the output of my uh, of uh, this unit right here. You can see it's 25 megahertz. 25 megahertz at, at zero dBm. And if I put that into here. And I say uh, frequency 25 megahertz. There it is. Okay, span. Let's make that uh, 20 megahertz. There it is. It's a zero dBm. See, there it is. Right there, zero dBm. So the cow worked. It's back to uh, its great self. Now, like I said, I think I showed you I had about 25 or 30 feet of it. If you go up, these things are, you can measure the uh, the loss in the coax really easy. Let's do a frequency of, uh, say, 100 uh, megahertz. Whoops. I must have gotten a whole lot of center. 100 megahertz, yeah. Let's see, frequency, 100 megahertz. Oh, yeah, I got to change it to um, frequency, 100 uh, megahertz. See, it's down just a little bit. I, when, I, when I first did that, I said, oh, it's not counting quite right. But what if we go up to uh, 400 megahertz, and then we change this frequency to uh, 400 megahertz. Now, yeah, see, there's still not that much loss in that coax. But you can see that it, it's working. Anyway, I hope this helps you guys. It's, um, it was quite a journey to get to this point to get this thing fixed again. I probably need to uh, find out exactly which battery it is and very lovingly take this thing out 
and pull the case off of it and uh, and replace that battery but I'd like to have one in hand before I disassemble it because I don't like to have things disassembled on my uh, workbench that's how things get lost over time you know people have good intentions and they disassemble something and then they say oh I gotta order a bunch of parts for it and they never get around to it and that ends up being the end of that instrument because uh, parts get lost that's just my opinion but anyway stay safe and uh, thanks for watching